Kendrick and Matt on the Slip and Dip podcast. Oh, beautiful, man. Woo! Slip and Dip podcast, episode 66. Kendrick Johnson, Matthew Wells, coming back to you fresh off a hot UFC Lincoln last night. Got special guests as always. Ryan, baby face, but noit. And a big guest who rarely does MMA, rarely does any MMA, blah, MMA videos. Tell them who we got there, Mr. Wells. Uh, a little secret. We, we've been keeping under wraps. It came through. Yeah, man. Feels uh, good. Feels good. Pretty big name. Pretty big controversial name in the world of MMA. Mr. Greg Hardy, former Pro Bowl NFL superstar turned MMA Prodigy, I guess. Nah, no, can you call him a prodigy? He, he, he be no just like they stole some of his money, bro. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Greg Hardy is—he's come through, man, and proven that he is capable of being successful in MMA after making the transition. Um, you know, for unfortunate reasons from his departure from the NFL. Um, we kind of talked to—we'll uh, talk to him about all of that a little bit. You know, we'll, we'll dive into everything. We, we try not to hold anything back. We, we, we'll talk to Greg Hardy in a little bit. Um, and, of course, Ryan Benoit going down uh, to face uh, Mr. Sanchez here at uh, UFC 228, man. Is it a good scrap? Yeah, it's going to be a good scrap. Going to be a good scrap. Um, I'm excited, man. we got a great show lined up for everybody out there. Um, if you're listening on YouTube or watching on YouTube, uh, please hit the subscribe button. Share it with your friends. Share it on your social media. And uh, help us grow the show a little bit. And uh, if you're listening on iTunes, please hit that subscribe button. Or, yeah, hit that subscribe button there as well. And leave a review. We need reviews on iTunes, please. Help us out in that department as well. It's a quick little thing. Help us out. It takes no more than two minutes. It helps us grow the show. Increase our invisibility. Our visibility, not invisibility. <laughs> but our visibility. But, uh, yeah, that's what we got going on, man. So what else in the world of combat sports this past weekend caught your eye, Kendrick? Man, man, what, what, shit, friends of the show did, did, did too, too well last night. I go. Angela Hill took a tough L and a and a. It, it was a nip and tuck affair. They went back and forth. It definitely could have been a fight of a night. I don't even know if they got it or not. And then no, man, James Vick, the executioner, got executioned last night. I, I'm not a Gaethje fan by any stretch, but he did what he had to do. And that that, that dude celebration is on point with anybody in the game. <laughs> My man does the somersault, sticks the landing. Flips over the cage, dabs at the face, and slips back over the cage and says, What's up, motherfucker? It <laughs> goes about his business. Now I get his props. He did what he had to do. My man yeah. James is like, I felt bad for him, but you know, I always tell you there's levels to this. He, I'm not saying he's not a big stage fighter. I would never say that about James, but I don't think he was ready for that stage. He was trying, it's like he was trying to talk himself up to get him hyped, but I don't think he was ready for that stage. I hate to say it. No, I, I don't know if he's necessarily not ready for the stage. I, it Man, did you look can't like, go to the camera. I'm going to change my life tonight. Like, that's something that you should be universal. Like. Yeah, it did look like he was kind of psyching himself up yeah. a little bit. And uh, you kind of saw it. You know, they kind of talked about it before and after the fight as well, or after the fight as well on Fox. That Maybe he looked a little bit timid in there. Maybe he was just trying to be a little bit too cautious with Justin. And uh, he let him get in his grill and uh, hit him with that one-two. And, of course, man. It's more about that one hit a quit and more that one two. That right. Pow. Yeah, that's a one two combination though. Yeah, but one two combination. He definitely, he definitely was out by the time he hit the ground. Of course, of course. It was nasty. I mean, when you're six three and you get hit like that, it's gonna be a long way down to the ground. Man, it, it was brutal. KO the year. Is it KO year running for you? Uh it's up there. It's up there. I I mean I wish you would have The celebration makes it even better though. <laughs> he just hits the ground, he jumps to the cage, flips, lands that sucker, it flips back out. What's up, boy? Flips back in. I told you, motherfucker. That right. was cold blooded right there, boy. No, it was, it was a. Did I you mean, see our man Trevor? Like, yeah, Trevor was just like another day in the office. That's how he always is, man. That's why I like Trevor. Because he doesn't get too hype. I mean, he'll smile a little bit, but he was like, my work is complete. Right. <laughs> I can go home, <laughs> you know, type thing. You're back to the gym making gloves. You know, that's what he's doing. Um, but yeah, man, it, it was impressive. It was impressive for Justin. Um, on his side of things, I'm glad to see him go in there and get an impressive win without taking a ton of damage. You know, it was funny because he said after the fact, he was like, somebody asked him, he was like, so you said you had five more fights left. Is that accurate still? And he was like, no, I said I had five more wars. <laughs> so still five more. <laughs> so kind of funny. Kind of funny to hear Justin speak on it that way. But, yeah, it's, it's good for him. Um, 
to get a win like that without taking a lot of damage. I mean, J- James did land some clean shots for you know a couple he's of exchanges. Kicking, he's kicking jazz on point, but he it got was caught like... up. He let, he let him smother him against the cage. Yeah, exactly. Let him smother him against the cage. If if he would controlled the center more, you know, it would have been a different outcome. I think where he could have uh, kept him at bay and used his range, but Gaethje kept cut off that cage man and got in and got in and pressed him against the fence and he had nowhere to go that one two put him down put him down nasty and uh kudos kudos to james man for taking a photo with him after the fact you know just being open and honest man worst fight of his life first worst night of his oh, life oh he said i didn't see the photo yeah he put it on his instagram man um let's see if i can pull it up here in just a second but he put it on his instagram and uh basically just saying you know it was the worst worst night of his life um and everything like that and uh yeah. let me pull it up here it's crazy Sorry, because on the very show the background. He, when we thought of justin casey i'm telling y'all people can tell he gonna knock me out he wants to knock me the hell out did you remember when he said something like around that on the show i was thinking about that when it happened I'm like oh my man's worst nightmare came with reality on the show the show became a reality and not in a good way yeah here's the photo after the fact right there okay Posing and then look, I think that's the fighter hotel. I get, I would have to guess. And uh, there's his quotes: "Worst night of my life last night." Thank you, Justin Gaethje, for the opportunity. Though confident in myself, I did always respect you. I said what I said to get and promote the fight. You're a class act, and I do appreciate your kind words last night. I have no excuses. I was in shape, healthy, and confident. I blew it. For all those that believe in me and support me, I'm truly sorry. And he keeps going on from there. And uh, I think he'll be back. I think he's. I think. Just, I think he's fine. You know, I don't. I don't think he has anything to worry about, of course. But it's just one more setback, man. One fifty-five division is Shark Tank. It's a Shark Tank, man, and uh, it's tough. Not only is it tough to get into that top five to crack that top five, it's even tougher once you're there to get a title shot. So, especially with all this Connor could be madness coming up soon. But I think that will clear up a lot of stuff, though. Shit, how, how, how's it gonna clear it up? Because you got you got Tony Ferguson who was never. Sh- Never actually lost his t- interim title. Yeah, he's so also he, fighting on the same card against against Pettis. Psh, man, it's just gonna be chaos. It's gonna be chaos. I man. guarantee you, uh, Pettis or not Pettis. My bad, I'm uh Tony or um, Gaethje gets the next shot. Possibly, possibly. And uh, now and later, commenting on uh, our YouTube stream right now, the way he felt, Ortega jumped up like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, he yeah. said it was like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I worked behind the scenes to get him on the show, man. I talked to him about three weeks ago, and he gave me his number. But he's a hard cat to catch, though. But when you catch him, though, he's a funny dude. Yeah, no, he's cool. He did a, he did a scrum backstage too, and he's hyped. Um, he all but confirmed the the new date against uh, Max Holloway. Oh, what would that be? I think he said in December um, in Toronto. Uh, Toronto. Yeah, I don't oh, think it's man, in Toronto. I gotta watch that on TV. I mean, Canada. Yep. It's a long, it's a long trip. Hey, um, Toronto knows how to. They bring a nice crowd, man. To the I, I, I hear this is a good fight. I'm just because this is one of my cities I want to go to. Just in general, screw fighting. I just want to go to Toronto. Period. Yeah, Toronto's nice. Um, when when the last fight card was out there, what was that? Two oh six. Ah, you got you got me on that one. Was that two oh six? I, I want to speak out of turn. I think it was two oh six. I was there, and it was bl- like <laughs> the day after the fight. It was like damn near a blizzard. Like it was crazy crazy man and i remember trying to get back home i had an hour delay on the plane i remember i got on the plane and they had to de-ice the plane four times once we were actually loaded up and on the runway good luck with all that it was that crazy man they they were shoveling like truckloads of snow off the runway it's crazy finally got out of there though thought i was gonna have to spend another day in toronto but i'd be be remiss not to talk about eric anders getting that man tim williams out of there with about 20 30 seconds left he did what he had to do. That perfect kick. I'm not there trying to go with this whole technicality, bro. No, I mean His it was legal. Was down it was legal. All that crazy. No, that was it was 100 percent legal. There's no there was no technicality to it. That was 100 percent legal. He had one hand on the ground, and that was it. One hand. Yeah, but feet. that's a dumb rule in general. No, I mean it was. Yeah, you're talking about the like the knee thing and stuff like that, and yeah. two hands. Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I agree. I agree. I agree. I, I mean, I, I don't know if we need soccer kicks for the lawn. I'm not opposed to the idea, but yeah, it's crazy. They have some silly rules. 12 to 6 elbows being the most silliest of all. But it is what it is, man. This whole MMA game is backwards when it comes to some things, like weight cutting. Won't go there, though. Won't, will not go there. Shout out 
Shout out to uh, Jake Ellenberger hanging it up, man. After yeah, I, when, he, when, he, when, he, when they did the decision, he had no time. Like, oh, I, 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 told, I told the missus, like, hey, you better hang this up. Yeah. Yeah, man. I remember it, man. It, Crazy. The first time I saw him fight was against Wonder Boy. That was the first time he got his head kicked off. Exactly. I was at that fight. Yeah. Exactly. And that was that was when he was on a rampage, man. He was tearing through they people. They had been the that. same since. Yeah. He was like he was a guy just running through people, and then all of a sudden, Wonder Boy just, you know, those two guys rising at the same time. One knocks the other one down, and he just couldn't recover from there. But uh, hell of a career, man. And he ends up 31, four, 31 and 14. That's a lot of walks to the cage, man. Yeah. That's a lot of walks to the cage. So best of luck to Jake Ellenberger in his future endeavors as well. I uh, got to talk about Davidson Figueroa and his knockout. Finish of hey, uh, John Maraga. That's a silent killer, bro. They need to put some respect on that man name. Yeah. He be getting people out of there. Not too that, many that, people. That, that, that record is not a fraud. <laughs> not that too man's many people. undefeated for a reason. Yeah, man. Not too many people are getting finishes like that at 125. Oh, and he's looking impressive. There, and the names you certainly get. Yeah, he he needs a top five next. I mean, he, I mean, John Morgan is six, obviously. So he, he's got to keep climbing that ladder. I know he called for a title shot. Well, he didn't necessarily call for a title shot, but <laughs> his uh, the, his thing is like people. Cause I was wondering Wally. why people. You know me, I'm not an undercard dude. I'm, I've seen his last three fights. I'm like, why people don't look at him? I go look at his own record. This is the first time he fought in America. That's why people don't know who you are. He fought every fight in Brazil until last night. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you need to get at least two more Americans uh, fights on American soil for for somebody to hype you up for a shot. Well, he needs a real translator for one. He doesn't need uh, he doesn't need <laughs> while Waleed going there and just basically being a hype man. You're there to translate, not being a hype man. Talking oh. about his record. Waleed was the guy that was on the mic. <laughs> uh, basically not translating. Translating but not translating. And... Uh, <laughs> It just became a mess after that. It became like a, a promo spot more than anything. But, yeah, man, I, all in all, though, the fight card last night was was pretty impressive um, through and through. Um, I mean, it was exciting. The only thing that sucked was that, again, these FS1 cards, it ended at midnight. Fight card started at 5.30 our time, central time. Why is it lasting till midnight? Kendrick, I don't understand it. Especially when the main event didn't it last for two minutes. Yeah. I mean, it it took so long to get there. It took so long to get there. Um. Oh yeah. Last one. One, one last little thing. How did you score that Michael Johnson Andre Feely fight? I think I had Feely win the three two. See, this is the thing. That, the only thing that stood out to me. I'm not mad if he scored twenty nine twenty eight for either guy, but my favorite 30, thing. 20, the thirty twenty seven. The thirty twenty seven for the loser yeah. is always the funniest thing to me. Because it's like, what are you, what are you watching, dude? Like, what are you watching? There's no way Andre Feely won all three of those rounds. No way. There's no way either guy won all three of those rounds. It's just state of judging. It's like sometimes it's like they'll be okay, they'll be okay, and then all of a sudden you'll be like, what? We still got this issue going on? Yeah. I, I wasn't impressed with it. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not impressed with Michael Johnson. It's like he's just trying to hang on. Yeah, I don't like the fact that, you know, he moved down to 145. I don't know if it was ever a tough cut for him to get there or what, but, I mean, anytime you're moving down in weight after being at one weight for so long, I mean, that's it's, – it's, there's other issues than weight at play there. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Anything else in the world of combat sports that caught your eye this weekend? Um, no, the boxing was cool, cool. It was laying low in the cut. What did the boxing things going through? Slip It Did Podcast. Shout out to the USCPRT. Thank y'all. Shout out to my man Josh. We go. We get <coughs> up in that thing. Two weeks. Slip It Did Podcast. USC 228. Up in our backyard. D-Town. Yeah, man. USC 228 is coming out uh, next week. Next week, man. I'm, I'm excited. Well, two weeks, technically. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> two weeks, technically. You're trying, you're trying to get in here a week early. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go I'm gonna go to sleep for a whole week. And, uh, yeah. You know, just I'm just gonna wake up on Monday of fight week and you know head downtown and catch we, all these guys. Got to our shirts, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. We got a lot of local talent on this card, man. It's gonna be something special. I'm gonna try to roll out to Fortis at some time, some point this week, and catch up with those guys and uh, see what's going down, man. Two title fights, stacked main card. I'm excited. I I'm think excited. I, I, the closer it gets, I think Tyrone snuck on Darren Till. I think Dan Till don't realize fighting in America on the big stage is a whole nother ball game, bro. Well, that's the that's the biggest story of the week is going to happen on Friday morning. 
Will he make weight? Will, will, will Kamaru Usman be the? Will Kamaru Usman get the tag in? He looks good right now. Yeah, he looks good right now. You know, uh, shout out to Jim Edwards who's out there in Vegas right now. Good, get some extra coverage of him as he uh, prepares to wrap up his uh, his camp. All you guys out there following Jim. MMA it, underscore Isn't that Jones. crazy that as much as Tyron has done that people still don't, don't like basically look at him as a dominant champion? He kind of looked like he, like he fluked his way in when he he didn't fluke nothing. He took the belt from Robbie and he's held on to it ever since. That's been almost three years. Yeah. He um, still like he's like a, a fluke champion. Yeah. It's uh it's crazy that he doesn't get the respect. I mean, it's kind of the same thing like with Connor, like I said last week. Well, Connor, though, he ain't defending the belt. I yeah, I know, but it's the same belt. thing. Is I'm just talking, like, on a fight-to-fight basis. Like, it seems like a lot of people outside of the the Irish hardcore, they don't ever give Connor a chance. They always try to find a reason for him to lose, you know. And I guess you do that anytime you're trying to break down a fight. But it just seems like with those two guys, it's like, yeah, they never give him the benefit of the doubt. Nope. But it is what it is, man. So let's do this. We've uh, talked long enough. Let's talk to Greg Hardy, the um, – much talked about, soon to be UFC heavyweight. Um, yeah, controversial guy for a number of reasons, but he's trying to do the right things and uh, make a make a name name for himself. And uh, you know, it is what it is, man. Take take his words from his own mouth that you're about to hear as we talk to him, and uh, make of it what you will. I, I, I tell somebody to listen to this interview, and I have a. Have a a, a a more unique perspective on this guy, who yeah. basically had to humble himself um, as a person and as a man to kind of rebuild himself to get back to where he's he's going. Yep, exactly. So here's what we'll do, guys. We're gonna hit you guys with uh, with Mr. Greg Hardy, and then we have UFC 228's Ryan Benoit, who will be taking on, like I said at the top of the show, Roberto Sanchez on the UFC. Fight past prelims, uh, UFC 228 in two weeks' time. And uh, Greg Hardy um, doesn't have a fight scheduled yet, but he has something in the works. So, again, um, shout out to everybody out there watching live on YouTube. We appreciate you guys coming in. Please hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends, share it on social media and everything like that, any blogs that you may be a part of. Um, let's get into this Greg Hardy interview. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoy it. And uh, please leave your comments below on what you think about it. And uh, we'll go from there. Until next week, guys, enjoy these interviews, and we'll catch you next week ahead of UFC 228 when we hopefully have some more things lined out for what that week is going to look like. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hectic. And uh, can't wait, man. Can't wait. We up in that thing. <laughs> so here we go, guys. Greg Hardy. Please welcome to the Slip and Dip podcast, making his Slip and Dip debut. Have a very special guest. One of the most talked about fighters in the UFC today. If you, if you see them on Dana White's Fight Night Contender Series, you know he's a bad man, Mr. Greg Hardy. Greg, thanks for your time, brother. Yes, sir. Thank y'all for having me, man. I appreciate it. So, so what what have you done to um adjust to MMA so fast coming from the NFL? Cause when I be watching the fights, it look like you like they didn't stole your money. You just be whooping ass and getting them out of there. <laughs> hey man, you know, I'm trying to bring that football attitude to the to the octagon. You know what I mean? Come in, handle business, make a statement, and get out. You know what I mean? Um, and honestly, you know, it's what's what's helped is being down here. You know, in in, in uh, Florida, working with American Top Team 24/7, living in the dorms. It's just been uh, instrumental in grasping things and figuring stuff out. You know what I mean? How much was it? A, was it a humble yourself moment to kind of basically start back down? You were basically a Pro Bowl defensive end playing for the Panthers and the Cowboys, and then you start a whole other sport. So did you just kind of have to humble your stuff yourself and then start back over, or just kind of like a natural transition? Man, you know this whole process has been uh, it's been humbling, and I, I honestly think that it will continue to be humbling. You know, you got to step into the ring with monsters and titans up here at the American Top Team every day. So if you come in with a cocky head or a high head, man, you know, it could be honestly the the, the, <laughs> the, the first thing you do before you end, end up sleep around here. So it's <laughs> it's a daily humility that I got to take and uh, just readjust, man. And it helps a lot as an athlete, you know, just to keep my focus and come, come with something new and come with something real every day, man, because you don't get that in football. Mm. So what would you say is like the biggest difference, like uh, training wise? I mean, how big is the difference between football shape and MMA shape? 
Oh, but there's, they're miles apart, man, honestly. It's just, it's a different kind of uh, conditioning, man. My body is using different muscles, different, uh, different parts than it's used, you know, in a long time. So I would honestly say just full body wise, man, this, this mixed martial arts thing is, it's definitely got something with the conditioning, but uh, football, man, there's just not, there's no, there's no kind of conditioning that you can prepare yourself for, for banging for 16 games in a season, man. That's just something that, that comes with uh, going to war. So. Yeah, it seems like I mean you're both both obviously very high impact sports, but it seems like you kind of condensed it down a little bit. Like you said, 16 game season, you know, all these practices day in and day out versus okay, this is fight night and we're just gonna do this, you know, for 15, 25 minutes at a time. You know, versus, you know, having to go through hours of games and, you know, clanging every single play. You know, I mean, I, I guess they're both hard on your body, but is there one, I guess, you know, recovery-wise that, that has been easier so far? I mean, I would say recovery-wise, this is for sure the easiest. Okay. For me, just because I've only been in there 17 seconds at a time. Oh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> true. True. But, um, no, no, no. It, uh, real, real talk, though. This MMA stuff, man, is it's continuous training. I mean, I've been trained. I've been trained how to train myself for years and years and years now. So I feel like it's a whole lot easier to do it on this side as opposed to just banging my body out on the other side and praying for the best with some ice and stem. You know how that goes. Yeah. Greg, what's your advice to for people that like keep saying like, "Oh, let's see him get us out the first round. See if he about that life." What do you want people to know about that? Because we ain't seen that happen so far. Man, honestly, you know, the same message. Enjoy the show, brother, and uh, tell Dana to send me somebody, man. Uh, we're preparing for the world down here. You know, uh, the motto right now is work harder. So we're preparing for uh, Brock Lesnar and all them boys up there at the top, man. We're, we're not uh, we're not preparing for anything less. So we're going to stay ready. And whenever they send me some, uh, a two-minute man, you know, we're going we're gonna to make a show of it. <laughs> How much has Dean Thomas had an impact on your life? He's a friend of the show, one of the best MMA trainers in the world today. How much has he impacted your career? And give some insight to um, how your relationship with him has helped you get to this point. You know, he's the guru, man. Undeni undeniably, hands down, he's the guru. You know, he's been, like you said earlier, the real one of the reasons why I uh, am, am able to make a transition. He's why, you know, all that work I'm putting in is uh, 85% with him and uh, just the way that he's able to break the game down, man, and translate it and and honestly, just finesse it to where, you know, it's his own baby at the same time. Teaching me the uh, basics and the originality of it all is, is amazing, man. And it's just, it's helping me, it's helping me spring forward so fast with my athletic ability, man, that I just don't think that, I don't think there's, there's a, another or better place to be if you're trying to figure this stuff out as an athlete. And on a personal note, I know you're a charismatic guy from what you see in the locker room and stuff with the, with the Cowboys and stuff. How can you do something in MMA where that, that side? You kind of like be low-key. Like you like the Grim Reaper. You come and take take fools out and go back to Florida and do your thing. <laughs> well, man, you know, a, a big part of what had happened initially with me coming into this uh, I want to say sport, I want to say game, into this sport was um, people thought it was a publicity stunt. So... You know, honestly, people are still talking about it. You know, like, oh, he's just playing. He, they, they, he's fighting uh, lemons. He's doing this, that, and the other. It's just like, for every time I want to step into the ring, I want to, I want to send a message. You know, and um, the guru will tell you this himself, man. The best way to handle business is to go and finish it. You know, so I want to make sure people know that it's getting finished. It's not a joke. You can put your put your hat in the ring if you want to, but it's, it's a dangerous gamble. Every time, every time somebody steps in, and I want people to know that, you know, and take me seriously, because uh, just like I play football, man, I'm here, I'm here for belts, man. I'm here, for, <laughs> I'm here, I'm here for uh, Pro Bowls and stuff like that. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, man. Um, you know, after your last fight, you know, another impressive knockout, you know, right off the bat, you know, you didn't even you didn't even give the guy a chance to breathe in there, right? And yeah. after the fact, Dana White gets on, you know, with the press after the fact, and he's like. Uh, I, I kind of want to see some wrestling now. And, you know, we kind of talked to, to Dean about this. You know, last time he was on the show, we were like, personally, me, when I think of a guy who was not you know, top of the league defensive end in the NFL, might have some good hips, might know how to sprawl for a takedown, and might know how to take somebody down if he needs to. So where, where would you say your wrestling game is compared to, you know, the guys that you've been working with at ATC? It's comprehensive, you know. If I'm using the word correctly, uh, if it's if it's where I needed to fit, you know, I can keep people from taking me down, and I'm learning more every day. 
um, consistently with Dean, just working on the MMA aspect of how it applies to the actual game and, you know, how ebb, ebb and flows. And honestly, man, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure, just like my football game, man, the details are taken care of, you know. Like you said, my hips, my sprawls, my takedowns, you know, knowing how to take down so I understand the takedowns and just – getting down to it so I can, uh, you know, manipulate every every aspect of the game eventually, you know. So that's that's honestly where I can say it, say it is and say, honestly say that it's getting better every second of every day, man. Did that, was that frustrating for you to hear that, though, that you weren't, you know, immediately getting called right back up, you know, after the fact, after, you know, scoring another impressive knockout? Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I wouldn't say frustrating, though. I would say uh, – it's just it, you know it's uh it's tedious it's, it's tedious work so it just gets kind of melodic and uh, it's like oh man all right I gotta go back to the dorms and push through again like work on more wrestling you know and just kind of believe believe in the process because if they if they can't walk through the hands they can't get to the wrestling and you know me assuming that I'm ready for the wrestling because nobody can walk through the hands is is naive so I believe it's it's honestly for the best just because um, I'm so fresh and so new but. Uh, you know who doesn't want to be in the big show? <laughs> who doesn't want that? Who don't want that first up? You know what I mean? Like if they if they call me, I'm uh, they say it's time. I'm, I'm definitely gonna be ready. But I mean, uh, just just like any other sport, you know, you want to take it take it over, you gotta understand the uh, the details and in betweens, and that's what I'm doing right now with Dean and everybody up here. Do, do you watch other people fight, regardless? Like like for instance, if you watch the fights last night, the UFC Lincoln, you watch other fight cards, or do you just like work on Greg Hardy and just do Greg Hardy things? I like to watch fights after they happen. You know, I can't really get into it with um, all the fan stuff because, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a student of film, you know, football, NFL film. So we get in there, turn the lights off, break it down, you know, no talking and uh, get into the details of it. So I'll probably catch it, uh, catch the fight pass fights and then go back and um, order, 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 order it a little bit later just to check out everything, man. But I, I'm definitely all day, every day breaking down film. Adding pieces to my game from uh, other guys in the middleweight, heavyweight, like heavyweight, man. Just I'm plugging, you know. Every every day it's like it's the it's the evil lab, man. Dean treats me like a a welterweight up here. So <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Always in the lab, man. What do you think about that Justin Gaethje knockout? Break that down with that one hit a quitter he threw on our, our man James Vick last night. Man, I only saw it, I only saw it on the replay, bro. But honestly. It's a beautiful thing for me, man, because everybody wants to talk about the athleticism, man, but this is this is a sport of details and everything matters. Everything costs, you know what I'm saying? It only takes one sweet, sweet, sweet torque of the hips, man, and you're gone. And that was just a beautiful example. It was just like, you know, we're throwing, we're throwing. It's like, boom, there it is. Yeah. So like, uh, it, it looked beautiful, man, for a man, for a man that enjoys the power and is, is slowly becoming obsessed with the uh, the knockout, man. That, that's what you hope for, you know, that's what you, and honestly, the awareness in the middle of it to uh, be able to land it, and I'm starting to learn the uh, the accuracy is a big deal. To be able to do that is, is, is a big deal. It all looked, initially, when I first came in, real easy, you know, just like, oh, man, yeah, I can do that, but now watching it, now watching it with a more mature eye, man, I, I can understand and uh, appreciate what the man did last night, you know, okay, he's a, okay, he's a monster, you know. So it's, it seems like to me, like, you know, when you came over to uh, ATT, it seems like a lot of people, you know, embraced you, you know, right off the bat. And I, I'm kind of wondering, like, was it kind of like a mutual thing? Because you obviously wanted to learn the sport, and uh, all the guys there, they get they get a new toy in a sense. They get a guy who's got insane athleticism who they can mold and kind of, you know, create this own, you know, sort of monster inside the cage. And they, they get to improve because they usually don't get the type of athleticism that you bring in the training room every day. Yeah, you know, I try to bring that every day, man. And I wouldn't say it was um, it was just initially all all rainbows and butterflies. Uh, people had their had their skepticism at first, and mm. you know, I just I, t- I, t- I took the approach that I, I took in, in football and just my along my journey so far with just killing with kindness, make sure they know why I'm here, and uh, make sure I'm the hardest working man in the room, man. And uh, honestly, just through that, I've gotten a lot of cooperation i've gotten a lot of, i've gained a lot of friendship i've gained a lot of uh, com- camaraderie and people that are willing to work and want to work now and see that it is beneficial to them and it's beneficial to me to um you know let me participate and let me let me be a part of the team man and that's just it, it's, it's honestly been a great feeling for me just because that's that's what i miss out on from being away from the football you know that's that's the big thing for me being away from a team being a part of a team being a part of a squad and just 
raising raising the level of play. You know, that's that's from from the Cowboys on through the Panthers, man. That's what I do. We raise the level, so it feels good to be back with that. Greg, give some insight about you as a person. What do you want people to know? Since you have, you be low key, like a couple of people, we just told, we told them we're gonna have you on the show. They're like, how did you do that? He doesn't talk. So, so, so can you give the people some insight to what makes Greg Hardy what go outside the cage? I mean, just being the best, man. You know, uh, a lot of people claim to know me and never met me, man. But I, 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 want, I want them to um, take notice to the people that have met me or to the people that I do know me or people that have seen me or watched me in the, in the sports, man. I'm hungry. You know, that's, it's never changed. I want people to notice the things that have never changed, you know, the hunger, the respect, the appreciation, man. Every show I've never been on, every um, every time I've never been asked to sign autographs, anything, you know what I'm saying? I'm here to entertain. I'm here to be the best, and I'm hungry for it, you know. And this, I feel I, I believe I'm a rare breed in the world, man, and that's what I want to – that's what I want to put out, you know, greatness, happiness, just beautiful, beautiful violence. <laughs> so. <laughs> what, what, realistically, how long do you think it, it'll take you, like, to get a top, get an uh, octagon with a top ten? How long do you think you think you can rise, rise up and fight like a like a uh, Francis Nagano or Derek Lewis, one of them crazy fights people want to see? My man, quote me on this one. As long as it takes. Mm. It, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't a butter up answer. It ain't a sweet answer. As long as it takes, man. That's how bad I want to be there. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't. I'm, it's important to me not to skip the skip those steps. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, like I said before, uh, fame my way up to the top and catch one of them opponents and maybe win. I want that. I want it to be no doubt. You know, I want that Mike Tyson effect. Like oh, we're, we're coming to see a knockout. We're coming to see the man win. And uh, I want to change minds that way, man. So however long it takes, baby. So what do you think of the um, the notion that some people are putting out there that? The reason that Dana didn't call you up already is because of you know the the controversial things that happened um, you know on the, on the outset of, with football. But um, there's a, there's a notion going around out there that they're bringing you along slowly so more people can kind of see you and kind of warm up to you versus just throwing you in that limelight right right away. What do you say to that? I say I know nothing of it. You know I'm not here for the politics of it. I'm not here to. Um, to be to to dilly dally and dilly dally in the semantics of it at all it's, it's it's not for me you know if I knew how to control and um you move those pieces of the puzzle I wouldn't be here in the in the way that I am now so honestly I'm just gonna stay in my lane work hard and hope people you know come along and go through the process you know because I feel like that's the piece that people miss a lot of the times they just want to be back in the line like they just want to be back they just want to everything to be good you know they don't want to go through the process. They don't want to take the lump. So that's what that's what I'm here to do. That's why I think about it, you know. I wanna I wanna be judged for what I'm doing, not for what people are trying to mold me as. And, it, and when it molds and when it, it catches and they uh they're all willing to watch, man, you know, that'll be a wonderful day and I'll still be here smiling. <laughs> right, right. And you know, I I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, you know, a lot of people also they're kind of, you know, still on the fence about you, you know, again given all those controversial things that happen, you know, a lot of people want to know you know, what is Greg Hardy doing outside of the cage to kind of atone for those things? You know, besides just buttoning down and focusing on this new career and, and being the best that you can be in this career. What are some of the things that you've been doing to, you know, I guess, so to, you know, quote unquote, you know, make up for the for the past? I mean, boss, man, if left with our own sins, we would have to atone for a lifetime to convince ourselves that we are innocent, my man. All I can really do is be strong in my faith and believe as a Christian that, you know, I'm here. Somebody gave you life for my forgiveness and work on who I am moving forward. Because that's, that's that's the person that's going to be in the, the new situations, the new uh, upcoming battles, the new controversy. This is the guy that's got to make the decisions to be the good example and make the right decisions. So that's the person I'm going to work on right now, and that's the person I'm working on. Does it feel good to be under the spotlight and keep pe proving people wrong that you're doing the right thing because you're doing the right things outside the cage and you're dropping fools inside the cage? Does it feel good to have that personal validation? Because I know every time I see you, like you go somewhere in L.A., TMZ's up in your face and you're like, I just want to do my thing, you know? They they been harassing you and stuff. That's all I want to do, man. You know, and it feels it feels great. You know, what I mean, Hear me when I say it feels great to be able to just. Uh, stay out the way, prove people wrong, and honestly have the ability to say, you know what I mean, um, I'm good, you know, uh, I'm fine. Like, you know, I don't, I don't need that right now. I don't, I'm just doing me. I'm just in, in like, I haven't always had that ability. You know, I've, I've sometimes 
you know, the last, what, two, three years been a target and have had the mic shoved in my face, you know. So to be back into a place to where I can find a piece of my vibe, so I can uh, – humble myself and just say, yo, I'm here to do this, I'm here to do that, and uh, I'm not worried about it and prove people wrong while I'm doing that it is amazing, man. It's it's, it's, the, it's it's one of the best parts of the journey, you know? Absolutely. So, obviously, right now, as we're doing this interview, we got the Cowboys playing a preseason game, man. How how much <laughs> how much do you miss it? I miss it a lot, man. You know, it's, what I, it's in my blood, bro. You, you can't do something for this long. Anything, you know, serving ice cream, honestly, just, and, and not be a part of you, so... I sneak my peaks, man, and uh, I holler at my guys and make sure they all good. But uh, I just I try to stay focused, you know, because uh, giving too much attention to something like that that you love so much will, will take away from what you're doing. So I kind of try to block it out just to make sure I'm all I'm, I'm all fighting all the time. How much personal validation would you get to fight a high profile fight in Vegas and have some of your NFL community that to support you and to get your head raised and this here winner by knockout? Man, you know, it's already happening right now. Like you said before, like I'm getting a little validation, just proving people wrong. You know, some of my old teammates coming out. Mike Tober was on TMZ hyping me up. Um, you know, talking about it's gonna be my first big fight, and uh, I got a couple other guys, that, you know, saying the same as well. So it feels good to have to hear that and uh, be ready. But uh, I mean, just because of uh, just because of my height, man, I just think I think it's gonna get better and better. But for me, it ain't gonna get better than these fights right here, man. Just you know, figuring the cage out. Uh, getting down to the grimy, finding out with these uh, these young guys, and uh, going through going through the rookie, the quote unquote rookie struggles. Because once I get there, man, it's just gonna be another day on the field. You know, the quote unquote cracking coming out, and I'm gonna shake and I'm gonna stir. Yeah, absolutely. What was what was the first memory I guess that that kind of caught your eye of the UFC? What was the earliest fight that you watched that you remember? The earliest fight? Yeah. Like, when was the first time that, like, the UFC really caught your eye and was like, man, this is, not only is it exciting, but, like, this is something that I could do? I think my man, no, shoot. It was probably Chuck. Chuck Liddell. Okay. I don't remember who he was fighting, man, but my man went to a war. <laughs> it was, and that, that and uh, one of the GSP fights where he broke his nose and my man was just bleeding all over the mat. Just... <laughs> Just seeing the, the the war, you know what I mean? The the warrior, the warrior, in these guys, and seeing how how uh, it was welcomed, and seeing how poised and how skilled you had to be to exist in them, uh, in, 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 in the octagon was instantly something that drew me to it. Yeah, it's it's crazy how often somebody like you ask somebody that it's it's either Chuck, GSP, you know, Boyce Gracie, like it's always like three or four names people always yeah. go to when they when they mention like their first memory of you know MMA and UFC is pretty cool. Pretty cool, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Who, that was who, a time. Who's somebody you want to see um, eventually? You mean fight? Yeah, yeah, fight. Yeah. Who's somebody yeah. you, you want to see in the cage? Everybody. All of them, huh? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want nobody to retire. I want everybody to stay right where they at. <laughs> I want, um, yeah, I don't want no questions. I don't want, like, like I said before, man, I don't want this. It's not a publicity stunt. Like, I want everybody to go through it and have their words and then see exactly what they talking about, just like they did for Francis, and let me put in my work and then come talk to me. Dean <laughs> yeah. uh, was on the show last week, and he said, uh, basically, there's people like that were, like a lot of people were calling your name about six months ago, and now y'all can't find those. But he called them superheroes six months <laughs> later. <laughs> Wait till six months from now, man. It's gonna it's just gonna keep getting worse, man. I'm not, I'm not you know I'm not I'm not gonna stay out the gym. I'm not gonna stay, I'm not gonna not work hard, you know. These guys are gonna ke- collect their check and they're gonna go to Hollywood and they're gonna play around. You know, I already did all that. I already I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't face my demons. All I all I want is my glory. You know, all I want is to feed my family. And that's here at the gym, so um, I think it's gonna be a dangerous asset for me. Hmm. So do you have, do you have a date set for your next fight or a date targeted that you want to get back in the cage? I think uh, I think I'm gonna be up uh, sometime around the end of September, beginning of October, is what I'm hearing. You know, I, I gave them the go ahead. I'm healthy. Just whenever they want me back, I'm there, man. That's what you know. I keep what I keep telling them. Okay, I'm, I'm, is, I'm back camp right now. Is anything signed, or is it? You know, do you know which promotion this is gonna be under? Is it gonna be UFC or? Nothing. Nothing signed yet. Just uh, just some whispers right now. But uh, you know, I'm back in camp. You know, they, uh, my advisors advised me to be here and get ready for it. So. That's what I'm doing, man, and uh, I would I would say look forward to it, man. You know, they haven't dropped the ball on it yet. Okay. 
I, we already know you're unlike a lot, a lot of people when they become get into the UFC, they become a professional athlete. You were the rare people that was already a professional athlete. How much does that mindset help you? Because like it seems like like you know in the streets, you don't want to be you won't be that person to get ready. You gotta stay ready. You like literally stay ready. You see, like like they call you tomorrow, you be like, I will see y'all Saturday night. You know, and that's the that's just like like I said, sixteen games, man. Like you could get off the plane Monday morning, man. Come into practice, they could change the whole playbook. The uh, new position, everything to change, and you know you got to pick up the phone and be like, "Yeah, no, I'm good, I'm ready." Pad up, pad up Wednesday, two practices, and go show the whole world who who who, who dominate. You know what I mean? And uh, I just think I'm bringing that same mentality into uh, this fight world. You know, with we'll, we'll combined with that rookie mentality, you know, just staying ready, staying on top of it, making sure that uh, as a professional athlete, man, all my all my all my eyes are dotted, and all my T's are crossed. Because if you're not ready, man. Well, you know what I'm saying? What can you do with an opportunity that's presented to you? How much do you feed off being, um, being that guy to let people know that you bought that life? Because you know in the NBA, I mean NBA, in the MMA world, a lot of people like talk that noise, but very few are really about that life. How you like like knowing, showing everybody about every white hand you knock somebody out that Greg Hardy is about that life? Man, you know, and for me, it's, uh, for me, it's, uh, it ain't, it's not about you know being about that life or, or being hard you know it's uh it's it, it's about handling business and being one of the greatest athletes to ever live man you can ask Carson Palmer his broke ribs about me you you know what I'm saying you can ask Tom Brady about me you can ask like I, I bring it in and, and I'm not scared of nobody every every 350 pound O lineman in the NFL I didn't fought you know what I mean from, down for my team 100 percent so just being about that life has never really appealed to me more so than uh. Making sure that everybody in the stands and everybody on your sideline knows that I'm the most dominant athlete on this field, you know, or on or, or in the octagon, and it all belongs to me. So, so how how much work have you done in a, in a gi working on your jujitsu? I actually just got my gi. I've been doing no gi since I stepped into the gym, you know, but uh, just got the gi. Uh, working on getting some partners and starting a beginners class. Okay. Hopefully this week. So no gi, you throwing up triangles and stuff. Like, what's what's your go-to submission right now? Hey man, you gotta wait till somebody gets me down there. <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep it surprise, keep baby. Rest. It's okay. all about it's all about the surprise, baby. They're gonna get down there and see what happens. All right, all right. <laughs> Not mad at that. Not mad at that, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So hopefully, we like you said, the end of September, we're looking at, at seeing you back in action. Um, you, For sure. You, yeah. So you you did say, or I'm not sure if you said or not. That was is it going to be UFC or is it another promotion? Uh, we don't know yet. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I was I wasn't sure. Um, I didn't want to misspeak there, but uh. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. So um, where where are you right now? I'm in the dorm room. Yeah, I'm back in uh okay. Florida. Okay. Are you gonna be out here for uh, for the fights in Dallas? I, I don't know, man. You know, if uh, if I get a if I get a date. I'll probably end up just staying here. If not, I'm gonna try to make it out, you know, support and hold it down for D town. Hey, hey, we, this our home, so we definitely gotta holler at you in person, man. Hey, man, it's slowly becoming my home too, man. So I would, I would love to get out, you know, even if it ain't uh, before the, uh, before this fight. Hopefully, right after my fight, you know, I always come home so I can get with you guys, man. I'd love to come on. Okay, cool. Absolutely, man. Well, great, man. We appreciate the time, man. Appreciate appreciate the honest answers. Yeah, I mean, definitely. you definitely come off like a polished. NFL professional, <laughs> you know, who knows how to handle his media questions. How, how many wins so. did the Cowboys get this year, man? Say what? How many wins did the Cowboys get this year? Super Bowl, man. I'm a team guy. You already know the answer. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> that, that's the answer any Cowboys fan or former fan <laughs> always. Yeah. It's never, that's the answer you got to expect, baby. It's, it's, it's never 0-16. It's, it's nothing in between. It's always Super Bowl. Super Bowl every time. Yeah. That's the only appropriate answer, man. You're not a Cowboys fan if you're thinking anything else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm a huge Cowboys fan, man. We I both got, are. You see the, see the artwork on the wall there. I mean, but. I see my boy back there for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm a Cowboys fan through and through. But, yeah, Super Bowl, that's a stretch. Come on. <laughs> hey, man, listen. Keep, keep an eye out, baby. Anything can happen. That's true. That's true, man. I, I'm riding with Dak, riding with Zeke. We'll see what they can get us, man. Hey, frame this right here, man. Jimmy Clausen, two wins, Carolina Panthers. What happened? Youngest team in the NFL, I believe. Had David Geddes, me, uh, Jimmy Clausen, a bunch of them boys. Looks just like the Cowboys right now, man. A year and a half, two years later, 
Super Bowl contenders, man. Kaepernick's the only one that was standing our way. Now that's all I'm saying. <laughs> you, gotta for, you gotta look out for them young boys, man. It, it played through in history already. That's true. That's so true, man. That's yes, so true. sir. Well, great, man. We appreciate the time, man. Thank you so much for coming on the Slip and Dip podcast. Look forward to talking to you again soon. And uh, obviously, you know, can't wait to hear this news about this next fight coming up. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate you having me on, man. Thank you for taking the time. Be easy, all right? All right, man. Hey, before we ready, bro. Welcome to the Slip and Dip Podcast, making his Slip, slip and Dip debut, Mr. Ryan Benoit, the baby face, straight out of McKinney, Texas. How's it feel to be on this UFC 228 card and come back home? Dude, it feels great, man. I haven't fought at home in, uh, since 2015 when I fought Sergio Pettis, um, so it's like super relieving. I fought twice in Australia, I fought in Vegas a couple of times, so it's Man, it's a blessing to finally be back home fighting in front of my hometown crowd. I never lose at home. I'm excited. <laughs> What's your mindset in? Because, like, since that Sergio fight, it's like you win, loss, win, loss. How do you build up some momentum so that you can make a run? Because we know you have the talent to compete with those top guys because not too many people knocking out Sergio Pettis. Yeah, yeah. You know, my mindset, I really want to get two in a row, man. I have yet to get two in a row in the UFC. I keep having this roller coaster of a career. Um, Man, I'm just hungry, you know. Um, I'm hungry to, to make this new contract happen. I'm hungry to get paid this new money. Um, I'm just hungry, man. I don't know how else to, to explain. Um, you know, I'm over training with this with this new crew, and yeah, I could just tell you I'm never getting submitted again. Um, and that's kind of been some of my problems in the past. But, uh, you know, I'm going and I'm doing the extra measures and taking the bigger steps to, to – you know, make things happen the way I want to happen. So you said you're working on a new deal. Is this the last fight in your contract or what? No, this is the first fight on my new contract. Oh, okay, actually. okay, okay. Got you, got you. Very cool. Yeah, so speaking on that, uh, the fight against Pettis back back here in Dallas, you know, a few years back, you know, I remember the, the controversy that kind of surrounded it with, with the kick after the fact. And, you know, you kind of rode a few people the wrong way, even though you're in your hometown. And, you know, we're back here again, though, so, I mean, you know, how, how would you compare yourself as a fighter then uh, to where you're at now, skill-wise? Uh, uh, you know, skill-wise, it's just totally developed, man. It's, it's, you know, in three years, a lot of stuff can happen. Um, you know, three years is a long time. Um, I've bounced around at quite a few different camps already. I've, I've been out to Vegas a couple of times, trained with Ricky Lundell. I've trained with uh, Syndicate. Um, you know, I've, I've trained at Canelo's gym. I've spent some good time down there. Um, you know, skill-wise, I've just developed entirely. And more than anything, I think um, I've matured, matured, you know, drastically in, in uh, my fight career. You know, when I fought Sergio, it was only my second fight in the UFC, and I had yet to get a win. Um, so, you know, a little bit more wildness and a little bit more of a dog fight was in my mind at that time. And um, now we've kind of planned things a little bit more strategically. Um, you know, we still got the dog fight inside of me. That's the fighter in me that, and, you know, that, that type of stuff will never leave me. But I think skill wise, you know, I've just, uh, you know, I've matured, man. I've, I've thought about things in a game plan, a different type of way. Um, you know, I, I just have gotten a ton of experience since that fight. And since that, um, since that booty kick came into play, um, you know, uh, uh, that was just, you know, I got caught up in the heat of the moment. I got a little bit emotional, and it, and it got the better of me at that time. But, you know, I've learned a lot since then, so I doubt anything like that should ever happen again. Very cool, very cool. And, and it's kind of crazy because, you know, you have a win over him, and he's, like, knocking on the door of a title shot now. You, do you think a win um, in this fight against Sanchez is going to get you in the rankings? You know, it might, it might not. I don't really, it doesn't bother me whether it does or not. Um, it's pretty cool to see Sergio sitting in that number two spot, and I'm the only one who's got a KO win over him. Um, yeah. I think only, I think Alex Caceres is the only other guy that's finished him. Um, you know, if, if I get in the rankings, cool. If I don't, cool. It doesn't matter. I'm at the point now to where I just want to make this career last and cash as many checks as I can while I can. So speaking of that, do you plan on being more active since you haven't fought since last November? 
Dude, I've been trying my best to stay as active as possible. I just can't stop getting injured. Um, so since I fought in November, I uh, I broke my hand in a couple of pla- a couple of different places in that fight. So I had to take a couple of months off from that. And then we were starting to train and get ready for you know whatever was going to come next. And then I took another knee injury, and uh, so I had to take some more time off from that. And then I think uh, you know knee injuries are a little bit more are a little more different than hand injuries because. When you have a knee injury, it's uh, you know it might not be as a, a broken bone, but it takes a little bit more of you like trusting your body and trusting yourself because you kind of put all your weight, your balance, and your legs, and um, you know up until you you can trust that leg and 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 you know put some weight on it because you know just because it's one little knee injury, it can in the knee there's so many different things going on in there to where if you move or step the wrong way, you could end up you know tearing your ACL or tearing something like even worse and then you're out for another year so it's something that i really tried to make sure was was going to be put together and i was going to trust the leg and i was going to trust my body to to fight the way that i fight and i wasn't going to have to like overcompensate for anything else and i wanted my body to be completely back to normal but with that being said yes i would love to be more active i would love to squeeze in another fight by the end of the year um oh man i got this new contract and i feel like money's about to be real money now and i i want to start uh i want to start cashing checks man i want to get through this contract get to another contract and you know if i get in the rankings or if i get in the in in a better position i can start calling guys out but either way i just want to get the ball rolling man i'm tired of having these big breaks in between fights yeah so with that uh with that new contract being signed i sure like the knockout that you got like that incredible knockout that you just got kind of helped with uh the negotiations right yeah, for sure. You know, I was actually the first ever flyweight to win with a head kick knockout in the UFC. So I think that that put a big, you know, statement on my name to what, what I can actually do. Um, so man, I got to get more of those. I want to get the I want to get the next knockout. I think there's only been uh, since then. I think only one other person has won with a head kick knockout. I forget who it was, but um, you know, I'm trying to get all of them. I want to have the the first, the third, the fourth. I, I you know. I want to. I want to be known again as the knockout guy in the UFC, and uh, you know I'm coming, man. It's, I'm on my way. Ryan, so, um, so, so where's your confidence level at, and how big of a deal is it to make that run and let everybody know that you you're the real, you're for real, you're the real deal? You know, my confidence is is you know my confidence is how it always is. You know, I I know how I can fight. I know what I can do, and I just I know that I just need my exposure, and I just need for people to see who I am, and I just need that opportunity to to showcase what I can do with with uh, with my new skills and my confidence and everything, man. Um, you know, I'm working on some things right now that that will will you everybody will see the development in this next fight, and everybody's going to see like the confidence and what I've been working on is going to make. One one confident in one area will make the other area shine drastically, and I think that's about to happen. And I think that that's how I'm about to make my run, and I think I'm about to to really scare a lot of people. I, I'd be remiss to add that not to be a Debbie Down or nothing. How big a deal is it ma- making that weight this time uh, out there? Just, just that was that uh, kind of being in like Sydney and something off. You'd be a lot more comfortable being in your own backyard, or just something that happened yeah. in the fight game. No, yeah. So I missed weight on the last fight, but uh, you know, no excuses. I missed weight. Uh, I, I did. I made some big changes to my weight cut and to my my routines that I normally don't do. I also had a big flight over to Australia, so the whole environment and when you whenever you fight overseas or whenever you fight uh, abroad, it's a lot. It's a big change up that people kind of don't really get to see, right? So like on fight week, and when I live in Dallas, I, I like I live there, right? And and. I have my routine. I know my places I can eat. I know where I can go to the gym. I can sleep well. I can sleep in my bed. And when you fight somewhere outside of the country, you struggle, like, figuring out, like, what to even eat, where to eat. And then when you do, let's say you do go to a restaurant and you want to order food and you look at the menu and it's, like, in a completely different language. And then so they can even they can even bring you an English menu. Like, I fought in Australia and they speak English over there, but it's not the same English. Like, they'll have different names for foods and they have different names for everything. And so... It's just a big change-up, man. And, um, you know, it kind of caught up with me a little bit. But, I mean, in the last, in the last weight cut, man, you know, I, 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 I went about it and I approached it in a different way. And when, usually when I start sweating and I start getting to a certain point where I know the weight's going to come off, it just it wasn't coming off. Usually I can cut about five pounds in about 
an hour in my normal weight cuts and this time it would took me an hour just to break a sweat um so it was it was just a big hiccup and it was a big it was probably more of my fault of you know planning poorly for that but um you know this time it's much different we're going to be in our hometown we have our own routine i know where to eat i know what to eat i get to sleep in my own bed um so i have i i don't think that the weight's going to be a problem whatsoever i'm i'm much lighter now than i usually am anyway so i feel good about it man so how do you feel like you know I mean, we talk to some fighters that are like they need to be away from the house they need to be away from their hometown to truly focus in where do you fall in that because you know fighting at home you like you said like you said you get to wake up in your own bed sleep in your own bed and everything like that use your own shower if you want you know so does that make a difference to you at all do you find more comfort or you know how's that work yeah definitely you? definitely um you know i actually spent uh my training camp somewhere else i haven't revealed exactly where i've been <laughs> doing my training camp yet but uh you know, I haven't been home in over a month, and it's been brutal, man, being away from my daughter and my family and stuff. But here's my, my attitude and my mindset behind it is, like, I, I have to look at myself as if I'm going to war like a soldier. So when we send, these, send our troops and we send our soldiers out to war, they're not allowed to go home to their bed and see their family and see their kids. They have to be able to go out, fight and kill and go home and wake up or go, go back to their barracks or wherever they're sleeping and wake up the next day and do it again. And if they have their wife or their daughter or somebody you know, feeling sympathy for them, it makes you feel weak. Um, so in my mindset for the past month, month and a half, I've been a soldier in, in this environment. And I'm going to see my daughter and my family when I get home. But, um, you know, that's just going to be like a, a relief emotionally. But um, for me, I think I, I, um, I think my focus is a lot better when I'm by myself. And it is, it's totally different for other people. And some people really like to be around their family. Some people don't. And, you know, I really love being around my family, and, and they help me out greatly. But I think that I become much more of a soldier and a savage and an animal when, um, when I'm not around them. And it allows me to kind of let that go a little bit more. It allows me to, like, be who I need to be for weeks and weeks and weeks for the fight. How, how much did, growing up in McKinney... Um, a, a nice suburb of Dallas, which I know for, for me, I'm familiar with. I'm the sports editor of their local newspaper. How much big a deal did that have you get the foundation, being a bulldog and being one of the best wrestlers ever come through there to get to this point? Well, what was your question? I, I'm sorry. I didn't How understand. much have you become going up in McKinney and being one of the top wrestlers from McKinney North help you get that foundation to get to where you're at today? How how was it, or how was the preparation, or what what's uh, how did they give you the mindset to develop the foundation to help you get to where you're at today in, in MMA? Starting, uh, off. you know, you know, I was always kind of like um, I grew up in McKinney, and I grew up in in uh, this town in in Deep Creek, Virginia. I moved to Texas when I was 14. Um, you know, it's 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 I, I the environment that I grew up in, man. You know, we used to get in fights on the weekends in in the fields, and we would we would get in fights in the locker rooms. And we didn't do this out of like anger or anything. We did it because it was fun. This is when the UFC was just kind of starting to break through, and it looked like the path for wrestlers um, was to fight. There was no, you know, we don't make any money wrestling. You don't make money wrestling in college, and when you're done wrestling in college. There's nothing left for wrestlers to do, and all of a sudden, there's a new career for us. And it was just exciting as can be because it was, at that time, wrestlers were dominating the game. Even Chuck Liddell was a Cal Poly wrestler and a wrestler in high school, and uh, he's over there knocking people out cold. Matt Hughes was, like, destroying everybody, and he was, like, the king of the UFC at that time. So, um, you know, being from McKinney, it was, it was, you know, I had a lot of, a lot of support behind me. You know, in, in my high school, I was the only one that, that um, made it out of my high school and went to state. And I was the only one who was like, there was a lot of tournaments I was competing at by myself, whether it was for the school or whether it was for the club team or whatever. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of not like anything out of the ordinary. It's kind of a familiar thing. Like, I'm from McKinney. There's actually a couple other UFC fighters. Uh, Steven Peterson's from McKinney who is uh, in the UFC also. Uh, Edwin hmm. Figueroa, he was a former UFC fighter. Um, you know, so it's kind of like the path for some of the guys. And I hope I, I hope I paid, like, a good way for people to be like, you know, I'm from McKinney and these other guys are from McKinney and we can make it, man. And you can. It's just, it's just about self-discipline and it's just about, you know, having that drive, man. you got to be able to handle the pressure and you got to be able to perform. Unlike a lot of journalists that cover the MMA game, I cover a lot of different sports. 
and cover high school football in Texas. I I, I, I just did a story today on that big $70 million palace that they opened up this week. Tell people about how big a deal high school football is and about that cool-ass stadium that's about to open up on Thursday. Like you say, like, I mean, two, two miles away, it lights up. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's nuts. I mean, you just said it. That's how big high school football is. They're putting that much money. I don't know how much the, the stadium costs exactly, but it's like seventy million. That's nuts. <laughs> I mean, that right there speaks for how much the the you know the community supports football. So, uh, you know, even Allen High School, um, which is like right down the road from McKinney, they've had this like incredible stadium for years. Actually, McKinney's got a really nice stadium already as it is and i was kind of surprised that they built another one um you know team sports are definitely what uh drives the area in that north texas area you know whether it's football baseball or or any other sports um that's kind of like the 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 main focus for that area so for people to become fighters or or something else it's, it's a little bit of a of a change and it kind of stands out a little bit more but sometimes that can get a little bit drowned in the in the environment because it's such a, a team sport dominant area just like you know anything else in dallas we have dallas mavericks we got the dallas cowboys we have the rangers we have the stars um so you know team sports are definitely the the hot item and those are definitely uh what drives people so it's a little bit of a change up for somebody from mckinney texas to be a mma fighter let alone in the ufc very cool man very cool so ryan before we get you out of here man Let's hear the prediction, man. How's it go down on September 8th against Roberto Sanchez? Man, you go, I'm going for the knockout. I always go for the knockout. You know, I'll, I have, um, I think I have eight knockouts, eight or nine knockouts in my career, so I, I don't expect anything different. Um, if the opportunity of another idea pops up, you know, I will definitely take it. But I'm definitely going for the finish, whether it's going to be a submission or a knockout. But my my game plan is always damage. I always look for damage, 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 and that's what I'm looking for, man. So if there's any prediction that I can give, just my prediction is a lot of damage. Very cool. Very well, cool appreciate man. your time, man. Look, look forward to seeing you. All. We both will be there. Okay, so awesome. we, look, we look forward to seeing you doing fight week and stuff. Yeah, we'll catch you at the media day, too, in a couple of days awesome. as well. So we'll see you out I'll there. I'll catch you guys in my post-fight victory media questionnaire afterwards or in the press conference i will see you guys there absolutely man take it easy man and enjoy the rest of the camp and uh we'll see you on fight night all right guys i'll see you later all right, peace man appreciate it